Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Well, we're going to read Judah's Scepter and Joseph's Birthright by J.H. Allen. The chapter is number 10, and the ch title chapter, the, the chapter title is Joseph Israel Lost. All right, let's get reading. And yes, I'm sorry, I'm trying to catch up on all my emails. I just caught up on my Hotmail account today. Oh boy. I had a hundred emails from people over actually so in spite of all the facts to the contrary there is a class of teachers who without one word of historic proof insist upon teaching that the egypto egypto israelites returned with the jews uh, bob's note here he's talking about um like in the book of Daniel, when um, the Persians allowed Judah to leave the Babylonian captivity and return to Jerusalem. And you could also read about that in Ezra and Nehemiah. If I remember correctly, Ezra was the high priest in work, the workings of the temple, and Nehemiah was the civil ruler, the king. Let's keep reading. Here is the argument of a com commentator who has written two commentaries on the Revelation. He is a good man and has a pure heart. Well, Mr. Allen, that's your opinion, but we'll see. But in so far on the subject is concerned, he certainly has not informed himself. He first asked the question, were not the ten tribes lost after the deportation of Shalamanzar as none but Judah and Benjamin returned in the Exodus of Nehemiah? And answers it thus, there is a general misappropriation and delusion on that subject as the ten tribes were carried into captivity 134 years before Judah and Benjamin. Yet doubtless many of the ten tribes returned with them to Palestine, so the ten tribes were not lost. But they simply lost their tribehood, as they did not return in their organized tribes, but as individuals. Hence all this hue and cry about the lost tribes, ransacking all the world to find them, and writing vast volumes, is a piece of twaddle and nonsense. So Bob's note here, yeah, they, uh, see, these religious leaders, so-called, they don't want the identity of Israel discovered. But I tell you what, if you want to know who Israel is in the last days, wait until the time of Jacob's trouble appears and find out what group of people are being persecuted. And it's not going to be the you-know-who's in the Middle East. No, they're going to be the ones doing the persecution. And hopefully in that day, people will wake up and figure out who it is that is the recipient of Satan's wrath in the time of Jacob Israel's trouble. Thus, let's keep reading. Thus, with one presumptive wave of the hand, he attempts to sweep from before our eyes the most important subject as far as the vindication of the Word of God is concerned, that he has ever made an appeal to a Bible-loving people for an honest hearing. This same commentator speaks of the exodus of Nehemiah and of the number that returned under Nehemiah as though there were but one exodus from Babylon, whereas there were two, the first and largest being under Ezra, while that of Nehemiah was 14 years later and was composed of those Jews which were left 
of the Babylonian Babylonianish captivity who did not go up with the first or Ezra Exodus. He further states the ten tribes had been in the Chaldean Empire 200 years at the time of the Exodus. But it is written that Israel was taken into, a, into Assyria and placed in the region of the rivers Hila and Habor, a region of country more than 500 miles from Babylon. Uh, Bob's note here. I think I'm going to believe the Bible over uh, so-called religious leaders. You know, yeah, 500 miles away. So this writer wants us to think that uh, Israel traveled 500 miles to go to Babylon to return to Jerusalem. Yeah, I don't think so. That's why it's so important, people, to read the Old Testament. The Bible starts in Genesis, not in Matthew. Matthew's the... Uh, beginning of the New Testament, the, the Gospels. So, I mean, I love Matthew, but it's not the beginning. It's the beginning of the end, but it's not the beginning. But it is written that Israel was taken into Assyria and placed in the regions of the rivers Hila and Habor, a region of, uh, a region of country more than 500 miles from Babylon, to us, it seems an insult to the integrity of God or, or any, uh, for any man to presume that the ten tribes ever saw Babylon. This commentator still further states, Of course they were but a fraction of Judah and Benjamin which returned, but God says, All the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem and everyone unto his city. Is there any question here as to which we shall believe? None whatsoever. But since our brother says that only a fraction of Judah and Benjamin returned, we would ask, where are the remaining fractions from which that fraction was taken? And since he tells us that doubtless many of the ten tribes returned with that fraction, we would ask, where is the whole number from which the many, many came? And without waiting for an answer, we shall hasten to say that when this man was driven to use the doubtless argument he had evidently lost something and that the people in question are lost at least to him when the lord had determined to give israel a bill of divorce bob's note that's in jeremiah 3 and verse 9 read jeremiah 3 1 through 9 he called Hosea to prophesy against her, and in order to have a perfect type of her adulterous condition, made him to take a wife of whoredoms and bear children of whoredoms, because the people of the land had committed great whoredoms, departing from the Lord. Bob's note here. If you want to read a love story, read the book of Hosea. Magnificent book. It's called A Minor Prophet. I did a commentary on it. Oh yeah, it's on my playlist. All you gotta do is go to my channel, hit playlist, click the playlist button towards the top, and then scroll through the many series that I have. Um, or you can do a search, you know, go on my channel and it has a magnifying glass over to the top right-hand side, and then right, type in Hosea. And you can find got lots of subjects I've covered. So, uh, As the wife of the prophet bore children, the Lord took the privilege of naming them. And in each name uttered a prophecy. When the first daughter was born, God said unto him, Call her name Lo-Ruhamah, which means not having obtained mercy. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah. And that's in Hosea 1, uh, verses 6 and 7. Now when she, the prophet's wife, had weaned lo she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, call his name Lo-Amai, lo which means not my people. For ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. 
Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sands of the sea. Bob's note here. Um, I live in Florida. And I used to live at the beach when I was a teen in high school. Uh, day and night. You know, we, um, we had wilderness of the beach. We had tall pine trees and a, a, that ocean breeze. And it was nice to go there at night. I mean, beautiful, just, you know, you could watch the moon uh, and the stars and listen to the waves come in and we'd hang out and, you know, drink beer and do doobies and, yeah, I'm not proud of that part, but, yeah, and uh, drop whatever pills we could find, so, uh, yeah, yep, not, I'm not bragging, not proud of it, but, you know, but uh, you go back uh, 30, 40 years later, and guess what? It's uh, all condos, all condos, yeah. Florida was pretty rural back in them days. But let me tell you what, there was so much sand on the seashore. I mean, all the way from Key West, all the way up to uh, Cocoa Beach, where the NASA so-called Space Center is, but... Yeah. So, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sands of the sea. People, there are millions, millions of grains of sand in Florida. Yet the children of the Israel shall be as the sands of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. But the... Um, Church world wants you to think that 12 to 15, 18 million Jews is, you know, <laughs> like the sand of the sea and cannot be measured nor numbered, which is why I'm not part of a church, so-called. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sands of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Hosea 1, 8 through 10. And that happened in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. Oh yeah, that was fulfilled. We are not, we do not become sons of God until we are, um, until uh, being born of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Beloved, did you catch the wonderful meaning of all this? Look, the name of the newborn son is Loamai, for God refuses any more to be the God of that people among whom the child is born. He casts them off and forsakes them. Yet, oh, do you see the immutability of the promises of the covenant-making and covenant-keeping Jehovah, who after making an unconditional promise must keep it, even if some conditions do change? God has said it. God has said it. He cannot lie. With him there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. He has promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that their seed shall become many nations. Bob's note here, not one little tiny nation in the Middle East. No, 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 that makes God a liar. And God is not a liar. The church world are the liars. Uh, the, somebody in the Bible wrote, let God be true and every man a liar. And that includes me, people. That includes us all. He has promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that their seed shall become many, many nations. I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee. Thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And people, what what race of people colonized the world, huh? And and spread to the north, the east, the south, and the west. Uh, take a guess. 
So, what group of people spread all over the earth to the north, the south, the east, and the west, colonized, built civilizations? Um, take a guess what people did this. One group of people build civilization, and another group destroy civilization. And then he told Joseph that all the, these promises should be fulfilled in his sons, at the same time making Ephraim his firstborn, that in due time he separated the scepter and the birthright. The scepter refers to kings. He separated the scepter and the birthright. Uh, let's see, scepter and the birthright, causing all the tribes to gather under the one or the other, making two kingdoms of the entire Abrahamic posterity, saying, this thing is of me. But now Ephraim Israel is joined to his idols they are not my people, and I will not be their God. I cast them out, and yet, in spite of this, and although driven from home by their enemies, yet the number of the children shall be as the sands of the sea, which cannot be numbered. And after living on the beach for a few years, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of sands of the sea, people. This language proves that although cast off, they must still increase and fulfill their God-appointed destiny by growing into a multitude of people, multitude of people in the midst of the earth, and in due time become a great nation or a company of nations. Bob's note here. Uh, all the refugees of the world, what countries do they want to uh, come to? Uh, all the Mexicans, what, what country do they want to come to? Do they want to go to Colombia? Do they want to go to Argentina? Panama? No, they want to come to the U.S. Um, all, the, all the refugees from Africa, where do they want to go? Don't they want to go to Europe and the United Kingdom, England, Britain, whatever you want to call it? Yeah, they don't want to go to the Congo. They don't want to go to Zimbabwe. No, no, they don't. They want to come to Europe. So everybody wants to come to these white Western countries. Isn't that interesting? Civilization, people. Um, all right, let's keep reading. So... Um, and in due time become a great nation or a company of nations. Also the words which immediately follow show that while in these cast out condition and while developing into their destiny, as regards multiplicity, they will become lost. So lost that they themselves will not know who they are. For it shall come to pass that in the place where they go, they will be told that they are not they will be told that they are not the people of God, that they are not Jacob's seed, that they are not Israel, as at the time of the casting off they knew themselves to be. And when they are told that they are not the people of God, they, have, they shall have so forgotten their origin that they will believe it. This being the case, they certainly will be lost, at least to themselves, and will need someone to prove to them that they are the descendants of God's chosen people. So when the time comes, the Lord has said that those persons shall be there and shall say unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Bob's note here. I think that's in Hosea. And I think it's also Paul quotes Hosea in the book of Romans, if I remember. So, keep reading. While Israel was true to the Lord, she was likened to a delicate and comely woman, and the Lord called her his wife. But when she became an idolatrous nation, she was called a harlot, and the Lord treated 
her as a woman who had broken wedlock by giving her a bill of divorce. After the Lord has cast her out of his sight and allowed her to be carried away into the Assyrian captivity, she is spoken of in prophecy as forsaken, a woman in widowhood, a wife of youth, refused, barren, and desolate. But the Lord made a promise of redemption to the same desolate one, saying, Thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. For, thy, for the, thy maker is thy husband. Once more, the Lord of hosts is his name. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou hast refused, saith thy God. For a fall, small remnant, I'm sorry, for a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. That's in Isaiah 54, 4 through 7. Isaiah is a wonderful book, people. I got a commentary on it. Look in the playlist. I mean, um, when I went to Bible college, uh, Isaiah was probably my favorite class. And by the way, yeah, I got a master's degree. Yeah. Uh, from a Bible cemetery. I mean, sem seminary. Uh, same thing. Yeah. Yeah, they think the Antichrists are God's chosen people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm kind of looking forward to the their chosen people cutting off their heads. Oh, that's right. They don't believe that. Uh, they're going to fly away in the pre-trib rapture. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> oh, I tell you what. I, I've, I've gotten to... Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me just say, the Lord... The Lord is just. That's all I'm going to say. You want to bless the Antichrist that hate and curse Jesus? Well, God will get God the Father will give you your reward. Oh yeah. Keep reading. You will also find by consulting the same chapter that while barren, forsaken and desolate, the same woman was to become the mother of more children than while married, or in other words, Israel was to increase while cast out more than before. This is exactly what the prophet Hosea has declared in the prophecy which we have been considering. The Lord uses Hosea to teach that Israel would become lost after being cast out in the following. For she said, I will, now this is Israel speaking, I will go after my lovers. Israel was swallowed up now, shall be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure, for they are gone up to Assyria a wild ass alone by himself. Ephraim hath hired lovers. In other words, Ephraim was hiring prostitutes, you know. That give me my bread and my water and my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her paths. So the Lord's saying he's going to block, he's going to block the way. And that's in Hosea 8, 8, uh, 9, and Hosea 9, 2, 5, and 6. To show that the scriptures, which we have just quoted, refer to Israel aside from the Jews, we call your attention to the opening words of the chapter in which the non uh, parenthetical or in closing text appears, which is as follows. Say ye unto your brethren, Amai, and to your sisters, Ruhama, plead with your mother. You know, her their mother was Israel. Plead with your mother, plead, for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. When God gave to Israel the name of Lo Amai, or not my people, it was because he had cast them off, and they were no longer his people. For when the Lord gives a name to a person or a nation, he names them in harmony with their character or condition. 
Bob's note here. Boy, that is really true in the Old Testament. Uh, it, if you go into the Old Testament and you look up a name, a lot of times, uh, I mean, quite often, it seems, uh, the name has meaning. For example, Sarah. Uh, the word Sarah, you know, Abraham's wife, means laugh or laughing or laughter. Because when God said that, you know, this 90-year-old woman was going to have a child, she laughed. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to have a child at 90 years old. <laughs> That's so funny. You know, but guess what? She did. So, and then she was, later she was laughing, but it was out of joy. Have you ever laughed out of joy? Yeah. Abraham. God changed his name from Abram to Abraham. Abraham means many nations. Yeah. You know, um, God changed Jacob's name to Israel, which means prince with God or rules with God. Um, let's see. I, I could, yeah, just, you know, you, you want to look up a theme, look up somebody's name in scripture and see what it means. It's quite true. Um, King David married... Oh, the wife of Nabal. Nabal, Nabal, N-A-B-O-L, I think it's spelled. His name meant fool. And uh, King David, well, future King David and his men went and asked Nabal for some uh, provisions for the men. They, you know, he was hiding from King Saul, who was trying to kill David. I mean, here it is, David had killed Goliath and saved Israel from utter collapse and catastrophe by killing Goliath, the Philistine giant. And Nabal was very, very wealthy. I mean, very wealthy. And he's like, well, pff, who's David, you know, that I should give him of my stuff, you know. And David, David was, I guess you could say, the, the modern translation was he was pissed off. He was angry. He took his men, they put on their swords, and they says, we're going to go pay a visit to Nabal. I'm going to kill that, that I'm going to kill him. You know, that's the Bob translation. And when uh, uh, Nabal's wife heard of it, she was, a, she was pretty good. She grabbed a bunch of stuff, bread, fruit, wine, you know, and put it on a, uh, the donkey, the ass, and uh, went down to meet David. And she fell at his feet and bowed to him and said, you know, please forgive this fool, you know, because that's his name, Nabal, fool, you know, <laughs> that's his name. And uh, David was really touched by her. And, uh, you know, and then the Lord, uh, the next day, his wife told Nabal what she did, and the Lord struck him down dead. Probably a stroke or something. So, yeah. And then David took uh, her to be a wife. So, she must have been of a really good spirit and probably not bad looking either. I know, girls, we, you know how guys are. Yeah, I'll admit, I'm guilty as charged too so all right let's keep reading but yeah names have a meanings in the old testament a, a lot of them so yeah it's good to have a a, a concordance hebrew dictionary so uh for when the lord gives a name to a person or a nation he gives them in harmony with their character or condition but while it is true that israel was not at the time the people of god it is true that jo uh, Judah was then ruling with him and was counted among the faithful. Hence, they were Amai, or the people of God. Oh, uh, remember, people. Now, this is Bob talking. Um, Judah is part of Israel. I mean, you know, just like uh, Scotland's part of the UK, you know, they might be Scottish Scots, but they're part of the UK. 
you know, um, people in, uh, you know, no matter what part of Germany you live in, you're, you're still German. Uh, you know, Florida, California, New York, Texas, we're all Americans, even though we don't live in the same area. So, you know, Judah is part of Israel. But Israel wasn't necessarily Judah, so there is a distinction that is lost on so-called churchgoers. Also, when God gave to Israel the name of Lo-Ruhamah, the meaning of which is not having obtained mercy, he did so because the name was characteristic of his attitude toward them at the time, for he declared that he would no longer have mercy upon them, but would cast them out. But at the time he said, I will, I will have mercy upon the house of Judah. So if Israel was lo Ruhama, the one not having obtained mercy, then Judah was Ruhama, the one which would obtained mercy. All right, so uh, let's see. For the word lo is in the Hebrew a negative. It means, you know, like not, no. Um, and in the scriptures under consideration, the words amai, lo amai, ruhama, and lo ruhama are Hebrew words that are transferred but not translated. These things being true, it is clear that the brethren, Amai and her sister Ruhama, who are exhorted to plead, are the Jews and Jewesses of the kingdom of Judah. It is they who are exhorted to plead with their mother, i.e. to plead with that out from which they are came, namely the kingdom of Israel. Yes, Israel, she of whom the Lord had said, she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. She, the woman of whoredoms, she, the woman who had broken wedlock, she who had run after hired lovers, she who asked counsel of cattle and stone images or idols, she who was joined to Jeroboam's calves and of whom, after she was sent adrift, the Lord said he would hedge up her way and make a wall that she could not find her paths i.e. being lost. The Lord further declares, when Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel, but when he offended in Baal, he died. Uh, Baal was basically Satanism, false, yeah, Satanism, basically. And now they sin more and more and have made them molten images of their silver and idols according to their own understanding all of it the work of craftsmen, they say of them, let the men who sacrifice kiss the calves. Therefore they shall be as the morning cloud and as the early dew that passeth away, as the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of the floor, as the smoke out of a chimney. Hosea 13, 1 through 3. After the smoke out of a chimney has disappeared, after the sun has risen and scattered the morning cloud, after the dew has been drawn from leaf and blade and passed away, if we were to ask you to hunt that scattered cloud, to search for that smoke and find again that dew, we are certain you would be willing to admit that they are lost. This is certainly what the Lord intends us to understand concerning the kingdom known as Israel. For subsequent to this and yet prior to the time when the Jews when into the Babylonian captivity, he declares through Jeremiah the prophet, My people have been lost sheep. And Bob's note here, what did Jesus say? He said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he told the, the disciples to go unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And Israel uh, compile, composes, can compose both Israel and Judah, since they are all of Israel. So, Ezekiel not only corroborates these prophets, but he visited Israel about 12 years before Nebuchadnezzar destroyed it, 
Jerusalem and took the Jews to Babylon. He says, As I was among the captives by the river of Chibar, the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. And that's in Ezekiel 1.1. 1, 1. You will find by consulting the map that the river Chibar is in the same region of country with Habar, Hala, and the river Gozan, where the Israelites were deported by Shalman Esser, king of Assyria. In fact, the rivers Gozan and Hala empty into the Chibar, which in turn empties into the Euphrates River. Chibar, Chabor, Habor, Kiba, and Heber are only different forms of the same word. Ezekiel continues and says, Then I came to them of the captivity at Tel Abib that dwelt by the river of Chibar, and I sat where they sat and remained there astonished among them seven days. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Ezekiel 5, 15 through 17. Then after speaking of many who should be destroyed by the sword, by sword, famine, and pestilence because of their abominations, how that he would scatter their bones round about the altars of their idols. Now, people, that's the uh, arrows of the Lord. Sword, famine, and pestilence, which is disease. You know, when you have a war, Bob's note here, when you have a war, the farmers are not planting crops. And then what happens when nobody, there's no food being harvested? There's famine. And what happens when people haven't eaten in months or weeks? Uh, disease takes over. The body's not strong enough to combat the disease. So, yeah. Um, then after speaking of many who would be destroyed by sword, famine, and pestilence because of their abominations, America, Europe, UK, are you guys listening? Are you listening? Because of their abominations, how that he would scatter their bones round about the altars of their idols. He says, yet will I leave a remnant that ye may have some that shall escape the sword among the nations, and he shall be scattered through the countries. And they that escape of you shall rem remember me among the nations, whither they shall be carried. Ezekiel 6, 8 and 9. Again, the offended God of Israel uses Ezekiel to declare, I will scatter them among the heathen and disperse thee in the countries, and will what? Destroy them? No. But consume thy filthiness out of thee. Ezekiel 22, 15. Bob's note here. On my playlist, um, I did a commentary on the entire book of Ezekiel. I got over 1,000 Bible studies, people. Over 1,000. I think it's over 1,500. Send me a USB drive. 64 to 128 and I'll make copies and send it back to you and you got everything just in case the day when tube de decides to delete me and if you're overseas if you're outside the US please send me an SD card because I can mail that in a letter instead of having to play with customs so yeah after this the Lord declares this dispersion to have been accomplished saying I scatter them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries. And when they entered into the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name when they said to them, These are the people of the Lord and are gone forth out of his land. But I had pity for mine holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. 
For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and bring you into your own land. Ezekiel 36, 19 through 24. Bob's note here. Maybe that's why the name of the Lord is not exactly known. Some people say Jehovah. Some people say Yahweh. Some people say Yahweh. Uh, I don't know, you know. But I sure know that it's not Yeshua. I know that for a fact. So, all right, let's keep reading here. Uh, the Jews were taken into Babylon and returned from thence, but the house of Israel, as herein stated, was scattered throughout all countries. But for the vindication of his holy name, he declared that he should yet be sanctified in the eyes of all nations by saving Israel and bringing them back to their own land. When this takes place, Israel shall come out from all countries. Bob's note here. No, this was not done by the United Nations, the Satanic United Nations, in 1948, when the Antichrist invaded the land. And if you look into it, um, Gog and Magog are considered the area of Russia. Well, where do you think Eastern European you-know-whos came from? Yeah, that area. They speak uh, Yid... Y I and then uh, Dish uh, as their language, which is not Hebrew, by the way. No, it has nothing to do with Hebrew. The letters might look the same, but the sounds are different. The words or meanings are different. Uh, they cannot read Hebrew. They cannot read Hebrew. They can't do it. But they want you to think that that's what it is, but it's not. So, Gog and Magog has invaded the land. Started in 48. So. so, did the Lord return and bring uh, Israel back to the land? Not unless your God is the satanic United Nations. So, and you wonder why I am uh, don't go to a religious center called, a, they call a church. Ugh. All right, let's keep reading. In the in two of these quotations, they are called the dispersed. This will enable us to understand Zephaniah 3 and verse 10. For from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my sup, suppliants, S-U-P-P-L-I-A-N-T, suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. Since we understand that the dispersed are the ten tribes which compose the birthright kingdom, we comprehend the grave import of the question asked by the chief man of Judah in the following. When the Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him, then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. And then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we cannot find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles? And that's in John 7, 32 through 35. This very question reveals the fact that the Jews knew that the ten tribes were dispersed among the nations and that they did not know where they were, hence that they could not go to them. They also comprehended the fact that, the, that if this man called Christ should prove to be the long-expected Messiah, he did, he did know, he did know where the lost people were and could go to them. It is also an admission from the chief men of Judah that a portion of the race were lost. Isaac Lesser, an eminent Jewish scholar who translated the Hebrew scriptures for the English-speaking Jews, said in his great work, The Jewish Religion, Volume 1, page 256, and I quote, Let us observe that by this return of the captives from Babylon, the Israelitish nation was not restored. 
since the ten tribes who had formerly composed the kingdom of Israel were let yet left in banishment. And to this day, the researchers of travelers and wise men have not been able to trace their fate, unquote. Micah also falls into exact line with the rest of the prophets, for through him the Lord declares, I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of thee. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Basra, as the flock in the midst of their fold. They shall make great noise by reason of the multitudes of men. Multitude of men! The breaker has come up before them. They have broken up and passed through the gate and are gone out by it. And their king shall pass before them and the Lord on the head of them. And that's in Micah 2, 12 and 13. The reason the Lord says this, he will assemble and put them together, is that prior to the time when Shal men Esert took the main body of the kingdom of Israel into Assyria, it seems that a former king, Tiglah, Pileser had taken the Reubenites, the Gadites, a portion of Naphtali, and one of the half-tribes of Manasseh, and brought them unto Hela and Hebor and Har Hara, and to the river Gozan. Later, the rest of the ten tribes were brought to the same region. As we have already noted, the last that Josephus knew concerning the ten tribes is that they were beyond the river Euphrates, this river rises at the foot of Mount Ararat up in the Caucasian Pass, the Caucasian Pass between the Black and Caspian Seas. Israel, making a great noise because of the multitude, went out through this pass or gate or entrance. What is meant by the king passing on before them is explained later. All right, people, Bob's, uh, that's the end of the chapter. Um, in case you don't know it, uh, the Caucasus or Caucasian Pass or the Caucasian Mountains is considered where the Caucasian race came from when they went into Europe. Uh, you could read Sharon Turner's magnificent book, um, The... Um, Oh, I'd have to look that up. Um, Sharon Turner was a um, scholar, a historian. He was a scholar, uh, a Roman or a, a historian. Um, it looks like he was a uh, a lawyer, and he became interested in Iceland and Anglo-Saxon literature. And he wrote a book in four volumes called The History of the Anglo-Saxons uh, between 1799 and 1805. And um, let's see. His book, um, it's funny, his book, The Anglo-Saxons, the Caucasians appear at about the same time that the Israelites vanished from history. So here it is, the Israelites vanished from history and the Anglo-Saxons, the Caucasians, appear to history. You know, well, Israel lost their identity. And uh, they went through the Caucasus, the Caucasus Mountains, where they get the word Caucasians from. You know, the white people. Yeah. So, you know... Uh, if you listen to the media, they'll tell you, oh, well, that's a cult. Well, yeah, they don't want Israel to know who they are because they want us, don't want us to know our Messiah is Jesus Christ. They want their Messiah to be worshipped, which is going to come one day. Um, when the lights go out, when the power goes out, and they'll probably proclaim we've been hit by a electromagnetic pulse or an EMP. Uh, that's when, you know, by whoever the, the boogeyman, boogeyman of the, the month is or whatever, Russia, Iran, North Korea, or whoever, 
Um, but that's when the purge is going to happen. That's when a lot of patriots are going to be rounded up and killed on the spot. So that's probably when there'll be famine, uh, just like a certain uh, town in Ukraine uh, during the Soviet uh, communist uh, takeover. They stole all the food from the farmers and, uh, yeah, let them starve. And then there'll be disease, whether, uh, well, let's just say after uh, all these uh, months or years of uh, what they've been pushing on us, you know, it's going to be an interesting time we're living in. And the Lord must have really thought we were strong to be able to know some of the things we know and what is coming but the world needs to be put into chaos for their messiah to appear and promise to make things better so you know the man of sin the antichrist the son of perdition the beast by whatever name uh he goes by paul and john called him the man of sin son of perdition john called him the the beast uh, i forget who called him the antichrist i think it was paul but yeah it's all referring to the same entity but like i say if you want to know who the uh god's chosen people are time of jacob's trouble pay attention to who's being persecuted and killed and who is doing the persecution yeah all these events are going to turn the church world on its head and uh, yeah all these preachers preaching lies and blessing those that hate and curse jesus uh yeah i'm, I'm actually looking forward to them getting their uh just reward so all right well that's the end of the book and we're about we're about halfway through the book um page we just finished page 136 and um the book ends at 367 oh i guess i'm not halfway through the book uh probably about a third this is a big book but i'll tell you what by the time you get through uh this book you're gonna have a lot of bible information in some ways, you'll probably know more than the average doctor of divinity, you know, somebody with a doctorate degree. You know, those Bible scholars, so-called, are so proud of their doctor. Oh, call me doctor, uh, doctor deceiver, you know. Yeah, they're so proud of their, their Bible cemetery and doctorate degrees. Um, a doctor of divinity is probably, I think it's eight, ten years of co uh, Bible co cemetery. And, um, one of the pastors that I respect, uh, says a doctor of divinity, a DD degree refers to dumb dogs. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was Isaiah that called, uh, the pastors of his day, dumb dogs. Yeah, who cannot bark. You know, at least a dog will bark and warn you when there's danger or when they hear something coming, you know. But these dumb dogs, they they don't bark. They don't warn nobody. You know, they're they love to sleep and slumber and eat. Uh Okay, that's in Isaiah 56 uh verse 10. His, the Lord's his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. They are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for his gain, his gain for from his quarter. Um, 
Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. And tell me that doesn't describe uh, television preachers. Oh, I think so. All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.